This nondescript grey box is so plain that you could easily miss it, but it won't miss you. It doesn't have a lens or a microphone or any wires, but from inside that box it still knows what's going on around it. Of course, being hidden in a box makes it hard to be sure what it is, but thankfully I happened to find out. While researching for another video in this series, I happened to stumble upon the website of the manufacturer, SDR, and from that I'm now almost certain that this is a radio traffic classifier, one of the many modern ways of measuring traffic flow. Where councils used to send people out with clickers to count cars, this little box does it all, 24-7, in both directions, come rain or shine, using just radio waves and some clever software. It works a bit like a bat's echolocation, sending out short bursts of radio energy, then analysing the reflections to figure out what's moving, how big it is and how fast. That means it can count cars, vans, trucks and cyclists all separately. While more mysterious than a traffic camera, it's probably more comforting too, because without a lens it can't be used to track any specific people or vehicles at all. The data from one of these can be used for any number of reasons, but this one and this one, just two roads over, are probably here because of a few redevelopment projects that are going on in the area. They're battery powered and easy to mount, making them perfect for temporary use and easy to move from site to site. They could of course also be installed at regular monitoring points to get month on month or year on year data about traffic flow for general traffic monitoring. Both of these can help the local authority to manage impact on local residents and make well informed road planning decisions for the future. Just one more of the high tech sensors quietly shaping how we move around and one more mystery solved as we ask the question, what's that thing? Quick update, about six weeks after filming, the main box we looked at disappeared. Maybe it was removed by the Safer Camera Partnership after it had done its job, or maybe a disgruntled anti-surveillance activist got there first. Either way, it's gone now.